You know, if you want to get a really authentic sound when improvising on your saxophone, then you need to get your tonguing under control. And in this lesson, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. So stick around if you want to find out more, because we're going to talk about bebop articulation and how you can practice it and incorporate it into your practice routine to really develop some amazing jazz skills. <laughs> G'day, Nigel Lee from Sax School. Welcome to another video. We're gonna have a lot of fun today talking about a really important skill. Even if you're not a jazz player, I think this is a great skill to understand. And practicing it is gonna help you to be a better all-round player in any style. So I'm talking about bebop articulation. But before we get started with that, if you're brand new here, make sure you do click the subscribe button, click that bell notification uh, icon too, so that you get notified of future videos, because I'm putting videos out like this all the time, and I really don't want you to miss any of them. Now, I've had a bunch of great questions from my sax school community recently about bebop articulation, and people wanting, wanting to learn more about not only what it is, but how to practice it better. So I've just created a brand new a uh, set of lessons about bebop articulation inside the sax school members area. If you don't know about sax school, well, that's what I do. So sax school is a huge online community with thousands of learners all around the world, hundreds and hundreds of courses and uh, lessons and masterclasses and all that sort of stuff. I'll put a link below or up here somewhere so that you can find out more about that if you want to jump in. It's an awesome place and you can connect with thousands of other players from all around the world. So anyway, check out the link if you want to find out more. Now, Bebop articulation is an articulation skill, so we're talking about our tonguing. And uh, it's an essential part of the style of bebop, but also any sort of jazz. And definitely if you're playing in big band, then this is something you need to understand as well. I mean, you know, Ch guys like Charlie Parker, all those bebop guys who really nail this. Check this out. <laughs> Now that sounds amazing. Now there's two things that are going on there. Obviously he's got fantastic articulation, but he's also got blistering uh, dexterity and finger technique. Now finger technique is something that you wanting to work on. Check out my seven chromatic workouts. That's a great lesson to really get your fingers moving fast. But for the articulation side of things, let's talk about what bebop articulation actually is. Now by the way, there's a worksheet you can get for this video. If you follow the link down below, then you can go to the blog and grab this worksheet. and It'll give you a couple of starting points of what you can work on in your own practice. Now, really simply, all that's going on with bebop articulation is we are tonguing basically every second note. Or a better way to describe it is if you think about a set of quavers or eighth notes. So that's where we've got two half count notes for every beat. So da 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 one and two and three and four and. Now with quavers or eighth notes, the first note lands on the beat, of course, and the second note lands on the second half of the beat. Now, we we call the second half of the beat the weaker part of the beat in, uh, in music, uh, because the strongest part of the beat is right on the beat. But in jazz or bebop articulation, what we're doing is we're tonguing from the weaker part of the beat and then slurring on to the strong part of the beat. So, for example, if we've got one and two and three and four, Da, 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 da. Instead of going da, 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 ta, ha, ta, 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 ha, ta, ha, ta, ha, ta, ha. So we're accenting the second half of the beat and we're slurring onto the first half of the beat. And that gives us that cool kind of uh, bounciness. I'll show you what it sounds like when we're looking at just a major scale. I've got my alto, but of course you could do this on your tenor or soprano or your baritone. So let's just say a G major scale. Da, 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 da. Now what I'm going to try to do now is to tongue on the second half of the beat to the first half of the beat. One and two and three and four. Really, really easy. And when you're practicing it slowly like that, you can see how it's pretty easy to get that even. Now, the best way to practice this is to pop your metronome on. I've got my metronome on here. Oh, let me just turn that up a bit louder so you can hear it. 
Okay, so this metronome is just set at 60, uh, and I'm going to play it in quavers or in eighth notes. So ta 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 ta. Here we go. Back down. So that's the best way to start off working on bebop articulation is just to put on a metronome nice and easy, something like that, 60 beats a minute, and start with your major scales and gradually try speeding them up. So that's the first way to practice them. Just take your major scales, gradually speed them up. Maybe today you're at 60, maybe tomorrow you're at 70. And eventually, in a few weeks time, you might be up to 150. <laughs> starting to sound like Charlie Parker. Okay, I'll give you one more exercise that you can try, and this is on the worksheet as well. Now, you can do all sorts of little patterns, finger patterns, with your major scales and bebop articulation, and it sounds really good. So, uh, let's try something like this. So what I'm doing there is I'm going, the first note, up, up again, and then back to the first note. And then I'm raising a, a note, and I'm doing it again. So it's G to A to B, back to G. Then A, B, C, back to A. And then B, C, D, back to B. So... So that's another great little exercise, and it's just using a, sim a simple pattern. So you could try all sorts of different patterns like that, different combinations and on different major scales with your metronome, gradually working through it, gradually speeding up. All the time though, really thinking about your fingers, making sure those fingers are very close to the keys, making sure you're going slow enough too that your articulation is completely accurate. And eventually, with a bit of focus and a bit of hard work, you'll be sounding like Charlie Parker too. So that's bebop articulation. It doesn't need to be any more compli complicated than that, and I definitely suggest at the start, you're better off focusing on those really basic skills, even if you've been playing for quite a while and you're feeling pretty confident with your tonguing. It's getting the rhythm of that tonguing from the offbeat, or the weaker part of the beat, onto the strong part of the beat, getting it really, really accurate that's gonna make it sound amazing. So don't forget, if you wanna find out more about this or practice it, you can grab the worksheet, grab the link the below, go over to the blog and get the worksheet for this. Uh, also, if you wanna really dig in harder with this, then check out my five minute bebop articulation workout inside the sax school members area because we, we actually go a little bit further with it. I break it down and show you step by step how to do it and I give you a really cool uh, workout back backing track that we can practice together. And the whole lesson is formatted so that you can play along with me and do it as part of your daily routine. And I found that that just makes so much uh, benefit, or so helps students make so much progress when we do it in that way. Uh, and of course, if you want to find out more about SAS School, there's thousands of students in there using the huge range of lessons, anything that you could imagine from just getting started right through to playing altissimo overtones, learning fabulous pop solos and jazz solos and a whole lot more. Okay, so let me know if this has helped you, leave me a comment, and uh, let me know if you practice bebop articulation, or is there another exercise that you use to work on this skill? I'd love to hear from you. And of course, if you're brand new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button and the bell notification, so I can see you on the next lesson, which will be coming out very soon. All right, keep practicing hard. I'll catch you next time.